Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to this week's edition of the Digital Shop Talk Radio. My name is Tom Dorsey. We're on episode 34. Time is flying. Coming into the fall season, September 25th, and I've got a fantastic show for you today. We got David Earp joining us from Village Transmission up in Washington State. We're going to be talking workflow and specialization roles. So get a pad of paper and a sharp pencil, and uh, you're going to want to take notes. Uh, welcome, Dave. Fantastic to have you. And I think you were on like when we were, uh, we broadcasted from Digital Shop Conference was last time I talked to you on air anyway, huh? Yeah, good to see you again, Tom. How are you today? Yeah, man. Fantastic. Living the dream, baby. How about you? How's things in Washington State at Village Transmission? Doing great. Um, you know, the weather's starting to turn. Um, we uh, saw some car counts dipping a little bit recently. Um, we immediately implemented an email blast, a back to school special, and that thing popped. I mean, I swear to God, we had five appointments within the first hour. Is that and right? Would you send it out? You did a, a, a text blast? Yes. Beautiful. Yeah, it worked awesome. So, um, you know, I, I love that part of the, the retention campaign that um, you can just immediately you see a dip in car count you can immediately do a do a blast and spur car counts you know yeah. in a heartbeat it's it's an amazing thing you know the the whole retention aspect of auto vitals i was i was i was telling some other people that that's not necessarily my forte i want to learn more about it um i still need to become better educated in that aspect of it but um as far as the workflow is concerned um i feel like i've got that pretty pretty down pat yeah i know you do um and you know it's funny because we we did a show about gosh i don't know how many episodes it was in the summer and we did it with uh john long from shirts and uh christopher peterson and adam benchik right and we talked a lot about workflow and specialization of roles in that episode and and i really want to you know if i can tie that in and because you've got the operational end of it they were talking and, and john had already implemented in his shop and it was having great results and really the discussion focused around on kind of why I would do it and and more I don't know I guess not I don't want to say theoretical but is it a right fit for my shop and, and what do I think is gonna be my benefit but you've actually got the experience with that how long have you had uh, an, a specialized role and I'm assuming the specialized role that you have up there is an estimator uh, in the shop yeah that's correct full-time estimator and and he's been exclusively on that job for about seven well seven years so i had a full-time estimator estimator before auto vitals even wow. but auto vitals really uh aided uh in that aspect of the job what i what i had is uh i had a burned out service advisor and um didn't want to lose him um because of all of the knowledge that he had uh with sourcing parts and building estimates and things like that but he just didn't want to work with people anymore. And I had to sort of invent a position for him. And when I did that, it alleviated a lot of the load off of my current advisors and enabled them to do what they do best, which is sell the jobs and take care of the customers. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, and, you know, and, and when Adam was talking about it in that episode, what he said is, you know, it, it, it was a thing where, you know, Hey, I noticed, you know, this person really loves to, you know, talk with the customer and they're very, um, you know, customer uh, service oriented, hates doing paperwork. This other person, not so much at the counter, but loves doing the paperwork and the detail and building out those estimates. And so he said, you know, hey, no brainer, you know, do what they, you love, you'll do it better. But in this case, you know, you have a guy who probably has been spending a lot of time doing both. But like you said, you've got years of investment. He's got years of experience. I mean, the internal value of that is just so incredibly high and exactly why lose them when you can just specialize a role around them. So how did that affect your business once you were able to pull that off? I'm sure he was uh, more motivated and engaged, but overall in the rest of the business, sales increased, customer service increased. Absolutely. So now we have somebody who actually has the time now that we're making all of these beautiful inspections and, and beautiful recommendations, we have somebody who actually has the time to sit edit he edit the inspection first and foremost before it gets sent to the customer, which 
you know, as well as I do, that's a very important thing to build a high average RO. Yeah. Uh, and then actually take the time to estimate all of the recommendations is a very important thing as well. So um, it, it was huge. I mean, it really alleviated my service advisors to provide better customer service because they're not thinking, oh, shoot, I've got to get that estimate done for Mrs. Jones right now. I can't call Mr. Peterson right now because I've got to build this estimate for Mr. Jones. And meanwhile, they've got customers walking in on them and the phone's ringing, all these things going on. What tends to happen is those estimates get put to the wayside and uh, they never get done. And uh, that, 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 that one little thing, adding a full-time estimator, I think has been one of the best things that I could have done for my business. And so before he moved into that estimator role, were, were, were you struggling with that? I mean, well, even in, even when he was on the counter or, you know, uh, you know, customer facing, was he, uh, when he gets busy, uh, cherry picking jobs? That's exactly what happens. Said, yeah. Because you said something that was really key. He estimates all the technician recommendations, all the technician recommendations, right? Mm -hmm. And so, in, in, you know, in a digital shop concept, what you have to realize, I think, is that you're going to sell it. You might as well estimate it now. You, maybe you don't sell it today, but just like we were kind of chatting before we went live is we're so driven by the phone. The phone tells us what to do. And if you put that information in front of a digital motorist, they're going to do it. They're going to respond, right? Because the mm -hmm. phone told them to. Think about how they act with, you know, or Netflix or some, you know, different, you know, the, the, your map app or some different app that you use, you update when it tells you and turn it on, respond to the notifications when it tells you to. And so if you can do that in your shop and they're driving into the shop for the next visit, guess what? They've, they've already looked at all the info. They know what your recommendations are. They, they, they've already approved it in their mind or they wouldn't be driving in there. It just might not be today. And so now you got the estimate built. And um, uh, you're ready to present it when it's time. And based on what you can set as a, you know, maintenance plan, customized for that motorist needs. And it's not if it's when. The other critical aspect of that is if we did our due diligence, we did a beautiful inspection, we did all the estimates. And sometimes the customer just flat out doesn't have the money to do sure. all of those recommendations. The service advisor needs to make sure that he puts any unsold recommendations into the recommendation field in your point of sale. That way, Auto Vitals will pick up on it and remind the customer of those recommendations that have already been estimated. Yeah, and if you know if you got your settings, you know if you're using your digital inspection um, assets in that reminder, then they're seeing the pictures and the videos that the text took, the text notes, and it's again, I think that. You know, it's like that old, how many touch points does it take to make the sale, you know, and the more that you can set an expectation, reinforce that through the reminder with the picture and video, again, when they're driving into the shop for that follow-up appointment uh, visit, they're sold. Just don't wreck it, you know, just don't give them a reason to say no next time. And if you open up the options, here's what we can do today, here's what you can do in, you know, three months, here's what you can do by end of year, something like that financing options come right on top. So in other words, you're not really trying to twist their arm and convince them. You're just trying to help facilitate the plan to get the work done, uh, 100% of the work done uh, from your technician's recommendations. Exactly. Hey, Dave, so um, what did you have to do from like a workflow perspective when you got uh, when you got the estimator? So your estimator was on board. So you've really built out your auto vitals uh, workflow uh, with that specific, uh, excuse me, with that specific role in mind, um, how is it different than say like the standard workflow that comes out of the can? Well, I can show you if you, if I, you want me to screen yeah. share real quick, I can show you how, what my TVP looks like in the, in the workflow view. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Dustin will help you get that thing done. I think he just has to, there you go. Okay. So we've got our today appointments. We've got these vehicles that are waiting for inspection. Um, this one has been queued up as needs estimates. Once the estimator um, sees this, he'll move it into creating estimates. That, that way, 
we know as service advisors that he's in the middle of creating an estimate. If the customer calls, you know, you can say, you know, Mrs. Jones, uh, we're in the middle of creating an estimate right now. Uh, you're going to get a notification here as soon as he's done um, that the estimates are done. So what happens is after he does the estimate, he's gonna move it into waiting for approval. At that point in time, the customer gets a notification along with the inspection automatically. And then we kind of watch the timer to see, you know, how long the customers looked at the inspection, kind of give it a few minutes, let it stew a little bit. Uh, if we don't hear from the customer, we call them and then sell the recommendations. That is awesome. You hear that, folks? That's the Amazon rule. Don't call them and, and push them. Set them up. Educate them. Set the expectation that they're supposed to call you back with questions. Wait on the call. It's really hard. But if, you know, I'll tell you, here's a, here's a tip for you uh, to make it easier. Take up fishing. <laughs> <laughs> because it'll make you patient to wait for that, you know, it's for that bite. But um but no, that's fantastic, Dave. I appreciate you showing that to the to us and um, getting an idea on how it is. So, so then your estimator comes in and his job's pretty simple. When it's in this column, I deal with it. If it's not, I really don't have to focus on it uh, too much. What have you noticed from um, from an efficiency perspective, and also maybe from I would say even an initial AR or a sales, you know, a close rate uh, perspective? Once that estimator got onto Auto Vitals and you guys kind of got it all. Uh, turned into habits? Well, so I, I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you everything is all uh, rainbows and unicorns sure. because it's not, there, there is a downside to it. Closing rate definitely goes up. Average RO definitely goes up. The problem that can happen here though, is sometimes let's say on a Monday, you, you, you inspect a bunch of cars. Okay. Well, now we've inspected five, six cars and they're all sitting and waiting for estimates. Well, that can be a bottleneck um, yeah. to where the estimator is absolutely buried for a few hours on Monday afternoon, trying to get these estimates done so the advisors can sell it. So what I've instructed my advisors to do, if you see something like that going on to where, you know, you've got five or six estimates waiting in queue, you know, you're perfectly, capable of doing some of those estimates yourself. So let's say, for example, it's a break job. You know, yeah, don't right. take a break job and put it in waiting for estimates and wait for the estimator to do it when you've got the thing up on the lift right now and you could just as easily build a break estimate and sell it immediately and get the tech or the parts and get them on it. This full-time, we do a lot of big transmission overhauls and, and a lot of big jobs, high ticket items. And, and that's more for what that, full-time estimator is designed for is, is the bigger stuff not the alternators and starters i you know and, and it's also for recommendations based off of the inspections to make sure that we are estimating all of the recommendations yeah and so and it's almost like the can job stuff right the can job stuff maybe the service writers can estimate like you said you know why tie up the lift um, get the big stuff over to the estimator, give them the time. Have you ever looked into using the smart chat function? And do you ever have guys like your, uh, your technicians as they're going through, maybe if they know there's a lot of recommendations and they, and they, and it's the potential to be a high, uh, ticket, right? A lot of hours on that ticket. Do you ever get them to start using that smart chat and start to send the inspection results over before they've even completed the inspection, just so you can get going? Yeah, we're doing that too, along with we're uh, using Voxer as well. Any means necessary that we can communicate quicker and easier. The one thing I cannot stand is when, you know, a service advisor is with a customer and a technician walks him up into the office and he sits there and stands and waits for the, you know, the service advisor to finish so he can tell him something, you know. So we communicate any means necessary. I don't care if it's text messaging from smartphone to smartphone uh, utilizing Boxer or the chat feature in Auto Vitals for yeah. sure. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, sooner you can get it done, sooner you can get it out, sooner the customer can review and get the answer back and you get get them out the same day, you know. Um, yeah. Is the amount of carryovers and stuff like that. You know, um, so that's funny. So so what about from the customer's perspective? 
right? Um, do they appreciate, so, so when they call in with questions, are they talking to the estimator on the phone? No, no, they're talking, talking to the service, service rider. rider. And so yeah, your so estimator is really setting that service rider up with the story, really getting them prepped, and then they just handle the inbound customer and, and do the sales portion. Yeah, and then all the service advisor has to do is, you know, quickly review the inspection, make sure he knows, you know, where we're at with all the recommendations. The estimates are all done. We use Mitchell, so we focus on the primary concern. First of all, that would be on the RO, and then we have revisions. Um, and what we do is we just walk them right on down the revisions, and the estimator will put them in order of importance, obviously, safety first, right? And we'll just walk the customer right on down that line and continue to sell the revisions until, you know, he says stop, right? <laughs> or he says next visit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then at that point, okay, well, we've, we've sold, you know, a good bulk of these recommendations. Let's take the unsold recommendations, put them in the point of sale uh, and remind them later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let, let, the, let the tool do its job. You know, and, it, and it's, you, you know, it's a great point you had earlier is that you have to put it in there. It's got to be visible. You want to make it as customer friendly as possible. So, you know, you've, you've, you've uh, you presented it during the last inspection. You present it again at a pickup. And then the, the text and the, the notes in there, you know, for the customer are exactly like it. So he remembers, he knows what the next step is. I should say he or she, I'm sorry. Um, and then uh, they and make it super simple for, for them to book that follow-up appointment, right? Click the button, you know, easy peasy. I get the confirmation text back. I know I've got my appointment because nowadays it's, I mean, it becomes so much crit more critical because, you know, the younger generations just don't want to talk to you on the phone. If, if they can avoid talking to you on the phone and you get those texts, man, you get a higher response rate. Uh, you get a higher uh, rate that actually shows up. I mean, have you experienced that using your CRM? Absolutely. I, you know, that very rarely when we capture an e email address, does somebody say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have an email address. I mean, that's one out of a thousand that comes in. I think our email uh, email entry rate is around 95%, you know, so everybody is communicating digitally now. If you're not, um, you know, you, you, you're pretty much living on a different planet as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. So Isn't it yeah, that's, that rock? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. So, so, I mean, what's next? So, um, you know, really when you've got that estimator role in there and um, you know, allows your service advisors uh, free time. So do you notice that the, because it starts at the technician, right? The technician with the digital shop really has to take the good pictures put in the good notes. I'm sure the estimator then gets to kind of be that conduit, you know, go in and do the follow-up. So, so in your role, does the estimator, does he ever reject an inspection? Does that go Absolutely. to the service rider first or does it go to the estimator first? It goes to the estimator. So as soon as the technician submits the inspection, it pings to his screen. He picks up on it. He starts editing, editing the inspection at that point in time creating all the estimates. If he doesn't like what he sees, if he doesn't like a picture or he thinks that that inspection is incomplete, he's going to reassign it. That's all part of my workflow program. Reassign it, kick it back to the technician, page over the intercom so everybody knows he didn't do it right and say, hey, Jim, you didn't complete your inspection. I'm reassigning it back to your tablet so you can complete it. You get sound effects in there and the whole thing. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, so, everybody. Um, ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Somebody's buying lunch. Yeah. That's awesome. It's so, holding people oh, yeah. accountable. That's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, um, and so, I mean, I mean, what a breath of fresh air for your service writer. So it's got to be empowering for them, free them up. So what do you have? I mean, because it almost gives them back half their day, really, if you think about it, if they were the ones having to chase the kittens all day. So what do you have them do with that time? Are they involved in marketing, follow-up calls? Are they doing more personal touches into your customer base? What do you have them doing? I would say it's more personal touch. These guys, my, I have two service advisors and six technicians. So we're a little, a little yeah. heavy on the back end. You know what I'm saying? So two so writers, an estimator, and six techs? 
Yes. Two wow. service advisors, one excavator, six technicians. That's awesome. So these guys are running and gunning all day long. And we get, you know, we get waiters and, and drop buys and, you know, you get people that just want to chat. I mean, they, the phone's ringing off the hook. It's, it's everything that they can manage just Already. without having that aspect of an estimator. Now, I, if I didn't have a full-time estimator, I would have another full-time service advisor. I mean, that's or two. Right. It sounds like or two. Yeah. You might have I to. Just, have I don't have the room. That's the other thing is I don't have the room in my front office yeah. to facilitate that. So I have a back office for an estimator. Yeah. Let them focus, get them out of the line of fire, closer mm -hmm. to the bays. You know, I see Frank Scandura, his shop's kind of like that. He's got a cool, you know, little setup in the back behind the counters. Um, and they get back there and that's really, I think they do a lot of their estimate and they do the presentation up front. And so it really, I'm sure helps when you can get the person out there to focus, because that's really where you want to make sure that they're putting in a lot. I mean, of course, everywhere in your business, you have to make sure you're focused and dialed yeah. in, but you know, in the S man, you don't want to miss something. You don't want to misquote it. You don't want to underestimate time. You want to take the time to focus and really think it through and really get up, be able to get out there and see if you need to add hours in there because you know the condition of the uh the vehicles that seized up or what, what's going on uh and really get a, a good uh i think team built around with your technicians and that estimator to to be able to set each other up for success right tell the story help the estimator to get it done in a in a fast amount of time in a complete uh picture and then he can then uh empower the service riders to um get out there and just because really now they're just establishing a timeline. It sounds like, right. As you come in and say, Hey, here's, you know, go, go ahead and sit down. Don't be afraid. Here we go. But you know, let's break this up into chunks. Let's make some commitment right now. And then let's plan to get all of this work done over time and then maintain it regularly. So we don't have to get back into these repairs. Right. Uh, and just as, as you build that um, uh, expectation um, and, and do a follow-up. So what would you say uh, from a, from a, a a return rate, you know, how many of your customers would you say in your, in your database are, are loyal out of the last 10 appointments you've had, how many of them were coming back because you're the shop for them? 80%. <laughs> yeah. So do you ever get worried that you got to find new customers every once in a while? No, it, when things slow down, I just hammer my own database, you know, exactly. I, I have a pretty large database, but you know what? I mean, you, Honestly, though, I mean, you're always going to face attrition. I mean, that's just part of the yeah. business, right? And you do got to get out there and you do got to, uh, you know, get new customers. And for me, the best thing that I feel that I've done with gaining new clients is generating positive reviews on Google. I mean, that has got to be number one. If you're going to focus on anything, get good reviews on the internet. You know, I look at bad experiences, which every shop deals with from time to time. And it's, it's how you deal with that client that really separates you from your competition. And if you've got to give them something, chalk it up as a marketing expense. I would rather give my marketing dollars to my customer, right? And, and generate a good review. And, and you give a customer something and ask them for a review, they're more than happy to do that for you. Oh, yeah. And so you generate, you get a five, you know, star reviews on, on Google. And before you know it, you know, new customers are just flocking your way. You yeah. don't have to do mass mail marketing and, and all of those things, which I do from time to time, but you know, maybe once a year or something like that. Not, not yeah, when monthly. You have to. When you have no. to, instead of trying to survive on it. Right. Because yep. that's where, I mean, that's what leads guys to undercut, you know, I mean, they're cut their margin, they're trying to promo everything and, and get in, uh, you know, 1995 oil change or whatever it is, because now I'm in this vicious circle of trying to survive off of that style of marketing. It just doesn't work. Um, you know, it, it, I'll tell you the most, the most powerful review is that one star review with the shop owner response. And then the customer comes back on and edits it to be a five star review because Dave was listened to me and took care of me and I'll be a customer for life. Right. Yep. Nothing more powerful than that because stuff happens. You know, mm -hmm. if you see all five star reviews, it's probably baloney. 
but, but, but man, when you can see, oh, it didn't go right in this place, but look at Dave's response. And then this customer actually gets on there and changes that review into a five star and says, thank you, Dave. I mean, there's nothing more powerful than that one. I'm not saying go out and screw stuff up, but you know, when they come, don't be afraid to take care of it. Be public, post it up there because people make decisions on the type of business owner. And if they want to do business with you, buy those types of interactions. And, um, it's gold for you. That, it, you know, the internet's forever. It's up there forever now. <laughs> yeah, not to mention the uh, SEO content too, Tom, that you can toss in there and, and load it up with the SEO words that you want to be using to, to help promote your shop. Hey, um, say we got a question from the audience here. Um, awesome. Dave, we're going to switch gears a little bit. How do you pay your estimator? Do you do it based on a uh, percent of sale or do you do it hourly? Um, is it bonus incentive based? How do you guys uh, compensate? Great question. Uh, he's, sal he's salary. And is he and, running on some type of bonus or commission? Yeah, he gets uh, he gets a bonus at the end of the month uh, based off of gross profit. Six percent of gross profit is his bonus, so salary plus six percent gross profit. Are you hiring? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he does pretty good. And uh, the yeah, other thing we yeah. didn't talk about with the estimator is he has the ability to work from home. I mean, every, <laughs> That's true, of course, <laughs> absolutely. He doesn't even need to be here, you know? Wow. Yeah. And so, just as long as the estimates are getting done in a timely manner and they're correct yeah. and the, and the inspections are getting edited, I'm fine with staying, you staying home. It doesn't make any difference to me. <laughs> so yeah, he's got, he's got a pretty good gig. There you go. That's the digital shop for you. Yep. Making sales with your feet up. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I had a guy, a sales guy, long uh, a while back, and, you know, he went on some vacation one day, and then he closed this, this sale, right, out by the pool at, at the hotel. Then the next time he was out, and he was at some campground in Big Sur, and he closed. And so I, I told him, man, you have to just stay on vacation. <laughs> just, you sell better when you're on vacation. Sure, he's, he's happier. While you're doing he it. like him better. Yeah, his mind's in the right place. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, hey, why not, right? Digital shop, um, digital communication. Like you said, you don't, you're not chained down to any desk or, you know, it's what makes sense. And, you know, really, if you look at it from a perspective of empowering people and giving them the tools that they need and putting them in a, an environment that they're comfortable in and confident in, because that's the, that's the bottom line and that they're in line with what your mission goals are, right? Is, you know, Dave has told me what the goals are here. I see my path in there. I know what my role is in it. I just get out of my way and let me excel at it. And, you know, if you think out of the box, you don't have to keep them in that same old traditional nine to five in the cage, whatever it is. Hey, man, you, you never know what you might be able to accomplish when you empower people in that fashion. And it sounds like it's working out very well for Dave Ert. Indeed, we're doing good. We're happy. We've got a great crew. Um, you know, just looking forward to finishing off the year strong. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so, and that's a good question too, is, 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 do you see that seasonality impacts you less when you're able to, because again, you have a bigger picture, I think on your business, you're not just looking at the two days out or one week out. And if you can look at months and quarters and plan accordingly and market to the, those needs, I'm sure you can flatten out some of your seasonality. I'm sure you get some up there, where you're at, you get you catch snow and pretty uh, stormy conditions, huh? Yeah, and not only that, but you can, you know, we have tons of previous data to look at, right? I mean, yeah. we historically, we know when the slow times are and when the busy times are. But with that being said, you can never fully predict it. I mean, sometimes, you know, things just either go yeah. flat or they go gangbusters. But you, you're right. You can level out those peaks and valleys uh, with, you know, looking at your previous data and changing up your marketing accordingly. Yeah, it's just being prepared, right? It's having a plan and work your plan. And and if you can get the data, if you can have a process in place that's scalable like that, and everybody's empowered in their role, then you can really, you know, start to look deeper into the year and really set big goals and then go after them. And you know what happens is when you're going after a really high goal, you know, the higher you set it, even if you don't hit that goal, but you're right there. Hey, you know what? You still grew your business. You probably did better than you did last period. And, uh, you know, all you got to do is beat yesterday by one and you're growing your business. That's um, right. And, and so, 
you know, fantastic show, Dave. I really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing that insight and sharing how you set up that estimator workflow. Um, you know, uh, can folks in the audience give you a holler if they've got questions and want to pick your brain? Absolutely. Yeah, you can find David. You're on our Facebook forum. Call him at Village Transmission. What, what's the name of your um, What's the name of your city in Washington? Edmonds, Washington. Oh, yeah, Edmonds. E -M -O -N -D -S. yeah, he's up in Edmonds. Google him. Part, you know, like him. Uh, uh, you know, partner up on Facebook, LinkedIn. Are you on LinkedIn? People can find you on there too. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. And uh, don't be shy because uh, you know. I've known Dave for quite a while. And, you know, one thing I know about Dave is he's always out there trying to move the industry forward and help other folks to do the same. Um, you coming out to digital shop conference this year? Absolutely. Spot, wouldn't miss buddy. it for the world. <laughs> Again, I think we're going to get you on stage, <laughs> but Dustin will talk to you about that afterwards. If you All right. It's it actually. Yeah. We talked about that beforehand. <laughs> Listening audience, uh, stay tuned for digital shop conference news coming out here very soon on that. We'll have a ton of great things to be talking about very, right. very soon. You get to meet Dustin and Dave live. So um, keep your eyes peeled and for hey, that. Uh, if you want to meet Dave too, go to the workshop in, in Seattle on, on October oh, yeah. 26th. Yeah, that's right. Autovato is going to be up in Washington. We're going to Seattle. Dave will be out there. Uva's going to come up and uh, we're going to we do got a few other days too. Autovitals.com slash events. Be sure to check them on out. out. Um, Minneapolis, Chicago, Vegas, Seattle. Good plug, buddy. Way to do it. All right, until next Wednesday, uh, tune in, Digital Shop Talk Radio. We're going to be back on Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, take, the, take the conversation on to the Facebook forum. I know, like I said, Adam, Chris, Peterson, uh, John Long, those guys will give you a lot of insight, Dave. Uh, and, uh, you know, see if it's right for your business. And then you got some folks that will help you out and make it work. Uh, until then, get out and make some money. We'll talk to you next week. All right, guys. Thanks, Dustin. Thanks for having Thanks a lot, me. Dave. You're awesome, buddy. Take care.